Hi, how's everybody doing today? Uh, Clint the Audio Guy here. Thanks for joining me. Uh, just doing a little, uh, a quick update before a major change happens to the system here. I uh, just woke up, got a little Vince Guaraldi trio, a little out of season, but it's peaceful before I go to, off to work. Uh, the rack parts showed up. So I've got, uh, because the amps do not fit in the existing rack, we've got the heavy duty wheels here. Right below are the custom cut uh, pillars, the black pillars there on the uprights. Um, if I went three high, this is this is considered too high. If I went three high, it would be really tall. And um, I was thinking about bringing up the bigger TV from the basement uh, for here. And I didn't want to have to mount it on the ceiling almost because the rack was so tall. And I want to leave room for a nice turntable uh, as well. So I didn't want it that tall. I didn't need that much space. I needed just under three inches. Uh, so I went five inches taller on the pillars to give me a little breathing room for the future. Uh, uh, also, that'll give me another shelf uh, below the preamp above the power conditioner. Uh, Something the Blu-ray player is going to go there. Um, anyway, other parts we got a, this is the adjustable shelf uh, that's above the power conditioner. So one more shelf in the rack. Um, the, um, <clears throat> oh, I got a little door. I get a little door for to cover the power conditioner. So it'll match the rack. It's gonna have mesh over it so that uh, that flashing voltage isn't going to be shining me in the face all the time. It's, it's oftentimes it's flickering between two voltages and you can't really turn that off, so. Uh, so you'll see just more Macintosh. You won't see the that piece, even though it's, it's fantastic power conditioner. Uh, we got the side panels because when you go taller on the pillars, you have to go taller on the side panels. And of course, those have to be custom cut as well um, if you're going to do a custom height. Which I was happy to learn that they will do that for me. Uh, I'm replacing the Saturn wheels, that's what these are called, um, with the, the big heavy duty ones because these things, two of them don't spin. It doesn't like this much weight already. These are 93 pounds each. Um, these are 158 pounds each, so um, I'm just gonna go with the bigger wheels, which requires drilling. Uh, I have to drill like three holes around each one because the whole, the wheel gets bolted to the bottom or screwed into the bottom and then bolted to the pillar. Uh, so it's gonna be a process. And then I can't drill all the way through, so I have to, I have to make like 24 holes like just deep enough so it doesn't come out the top. So hopefully I don't ruin my rack while I'm drilling. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah, so over here is going to be my new source. You know, people are like, oh, I'd upgrade, upgrade your source. Yeah, I know. This, this was a temporary table that I got just to spin some vinyl until I decided what I really want. Um, my secondary temporary table, let's say, closer to what I want, uh, is here, and it's going to go in here. Um, here I'm going to put an SACD player. So I'll show you. Here are the uh, the other upgrades. Let's say all this is going in the system. So I got a Sonos Connect uh, to do streaming, uh, Roku Ultra to do video streaming. Um, so I can do Plex and uh, you know Netflix and all that stuff. The TV does that, but this is an old TV. It's not an Android TV. And it's very slow at doing that stuff. It doesn't uh, doesn't stream so hot. Uh, as I've said before, TV is not my priority. Obviously, <laughs> I could have had a good TV and a soundbar here, but what fun is that? Uh, DVD writer. It's a portable CD-ROM drive, basically, uh, or a USB CD-ROM drive, I should say. So, the music server. Uh, can use an external CD-ROM drive and you can rip music right to it. The drawback being there's no backup on your computer of it. But it makes it really quick. If somebody brings a CD over, you could just pop it in and it just right onto your server. You know, five minutes, it, it'll rip it itself. Uh, this is the cartridge I'm going to be using for the turntable, the Eroica LX. Um, 
it's a low output moving coil. It's supposed to be very nice. Uh, here's the Marantz uh, reference turntable. So acrylic platter and plinth. I've got a review of that one. Um, here is the uh, the new digital player, let's say. So SA CD player, uh, Red Book CD. It's the Kai Ruby edition from Ken Ishiwara. Unfortunately, uh, this was like the last thing he did. Uh, he retired from Marantz and then he passed away a little bit later, uh, just, just recently. So, 40 years of passion. That's, he was there for 40 years, so hence the Ruby uh, anniversary. Uh, <clears throat> his name's milled into the top, and then there's a little Ruby there too. So I'm anxious to see how that one uh, is going to sound. That's a it's a heavy piece. The uh, Marantz reference stuff. They they mill the front out of a block of aluminum. It's it's a pretty solid build. And then of course the uh, the preamp. So the C53 from Macintosh. Uh, like I said before, I'm going uh, I'm going solid state. Uh, the tubes uh, the tubes are cool, and the uh, the current one's a C2600 in there. They have a new one, the C2700, uh, that goes to the modular DAC. Um, the C53 over there is the first one that uh, that gets that that got that modular DAC uh, version two, um, the the second module, which has HDMI audio return channel, uh, some really high res formats in it. Uh, it's Rune Rune tested. Uh, whatever that means, I haven't really got into Rune yet. Um, but the the big uh, the big story of the show the, the uh, is the big amps here. Can't wait to see the big meters. I don't expect to hear a huge difference, but uh, I'm hoping with the the preamp change as well that I <laughs> that I see it hear a difference and obviously see a difference. Anyway, that's what I'm working on. Um, oh, somebody said, uh, oh, you'd, I'd update your couch to a, uh, something that fits the more contemporary room that you're working on. And uh, I was like, I thought he meant my couch. I was like, what are you talking about? I, this is, that's like the newest piece of furniture I own. I've never spent that much on a couch before. I'm hoping to get like 20 years out of it. Uh, and then I realized, got to be talking about this. Uh, the love seat here. This is uh, this came with the house. I bought the house. I said they, they were old. They're going into a rest home, and I said you can leave whatever you want. That's like part of my deal. I'll haul it out for you. So they left me two of these. So I got one in the basement, and I got one here. Um, over here, what is this? This is my solution to it for now because I don't like spending money on stuff that isn't stereo equipment, or cameras, or food. Uh, there's the slip cover here uh navy navy blue to match the throw pillows on the other couch kind of tie it together a little bit plus blue is more neutral color i have instructions there's all kinds of stuff i have to do to get it on the couch i haven't put it on yet but hopefully that'll look better than that <laughs> uh clearly it's not it's not attractive although it's barely it's barely been set in so it's it's still a nice it's a nice piece of furniture, it's just ugly. Anyway, uh, as I ramble on, girl was over the other day. I'm like, oh, you've never seen Beverly Hills Ninja? And I'm like, oh, I gotta put it in. I go to put it in, she's like, I hate Chris Farley. I'm like, what is wrong with you? It's like the funniest movie ever. So, I don't know if we can be friends, but that's neither here nor there. I'm keen on uh, Volbeat now. Just uh, I need to get some stress out, so I'm picking up some heavier stuff. <laughs> anyway, I'll stop rambling. I got to get off to work. You guys have a fabulous day, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Take care. <laughs>